Looks like we only have one thanks this video. Let's get on with it. Jesse 24 girl. Thank you for supporting the channel and as always, thank you all for watching. Welcome to Heaven Awaits. If this is your first time checking this channel out, I'm glad to have you here. My name is Lee, and I narrate the near-death experiences of those who have died and have seen the other side. My videos are meant to bring hope to a sometimes hopeless world and to show people that there is indeed life after death. If you enjoy these videos, please consider hitting the thumbs up, subscribe, and bell icons to be notified of new content. Doing so is free, and it does help the channel grow. To my return viewers, welcome back. Sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee or tea, and enjoy today's narration. Here is one this channel hasn't done, but you have likely heard elsewhere, and that is Dr. Eben Alexander's experience. Everyone knows that according to his book, Dr. Alexander was in a coma for seven days. While in that coma, he saw angelic beings and realized that none of this could have been a dream or hallucination. Be warned, I mispronounce a lot of medical terms. At 4.30 a.m. on November 10, 2008, I suddenly became very ill with acute bacterial meningoencephalitis. Within four hours, I was deep in a coma. I spent the next seven days on a ventilator. Bacterial meningitis with such a rapid decline in neurologic function conferred a 90% mortality rate, as assessed at the time of my initial ER evaluation, but my prospects for survival rapidly worsened. My physicians at Lynchburg General Hospital in Virginia were shocked to find that I had acquired spontaneous E. coli meningitis, which has less than 1 in 10 million annual incidences. They were aided by experts at the University of Virginia, Duke, Massachusetts General Hospital, and beyond in their efforts to find a cause and force a turnaround in what at first seemed to be an irreversible death spiral as I failed to respond to triple antibiotics. My medical history of recent travel to Israel, as part of my work coordinating global research in focused ultrasound surgery, raised great concern among my doctors. Around the time of my visit, physicians at the Tel Aviv Sorosky Medical Center had reported the world's first well-documented case of spontaneous plasma transfer of the Klebsiella pneumonia carbapenemis, KPC, gene from a deadly gram-negative organism into a patient's previously uninfected intestinal E. coli, conferring total antibiotic resistance on the latter. The terrifying implications for a disastrous pandemic if such an E. coli ever escaped the strict isolation of a hospital ICU were obvious, and my doctors considered that I might represent such a case. My neurological examinations were consistent with diffuse cortical damage plus extraocular motor dysfunction, brainstem damage. My CT scans revealed global neocortical involvement, and on the third day, my CSF protein was 1,340 mg per deciliter, my CSF white blood cell count was 4,300 per m cubed, and my CSF glucose level was down to 1 mg per deciliter, compared with the normal value of 60 to 80 m per deciliter. I was extremely ill, with diminishing chances for survival and virtually no chance for recovery. My physicians never found a cause for my mysterious malady. Fortunately, my E. coli finally started to respond. On the seventh day of my coma, to everyone's surprise, I opened my eyes and started to come back. I was rapidly extubated by the shocked intensivist. A family friend who was there could not get over how my amazed expression looked more like the astonished gaze of an infant, not like what one would expect from an adult returning from an unconscious state. A recent objective medical review of my records, coordinated by Dr. Bruce Grayson, came to the following conclusions. Three physicians not associated with Lynchburg General Hospital completed an independent review of the complete medical record of Dr. Alexander's hospitalization and spoke with the hospital's two consulting neurologists to gather additional information. The records indicated that Dr. Alexander was brought to the emergency department unresponsive with evidence of a bacterial infection and he was assessed to have moderate brain injury, which rapidly progressed to severe brain injury over the next few hours. Brain scans showed that the membranes covering the brain as well as the grooves in his cerebral cortex were swollen with pus-filled liquid, 
compressing the cortical tissue. Laboratory examination showed evidence of a bacterial infection in his cerebrospinal fluid due to an organism that very rarely causes meningitis in adults, and when it does, is almost always fatal or resulting in permanent neurological deficits. Nevertheless, after a profound near-death experience, Dr. Alexander eventually awoke from his coma, and within a few months had made what his surprised neurologists called a complete and remarkable recovery from an illness they agreed might well have been fatal, without any residual neurological deficit. If one had asked me before my coma how much a patient would remember after such severe meningitis, I would have answered nothing and been thinking in the back of my mind that no one would recover from such an illness, at least not to the point of being able to discuss their memories. Thus, you can imagine my surprise at remembering an elaborate and rich odyssey from deep within a coma that comprised more than 20,000 words by the time I had written it all down during the six weeks following my return from the hospital. My older son, Ibn Alexander IV, who was majoring in neuroscience at the University of Delaware at the time, advised me to record everything I could remember before I read anything about near-death experiences, NDEs, physics, or cosmology. I dutifully did so, in spite of an intense yearning to read everything I could about those subjects, based on the stunning character of my coma experience. My meningoencephalitis had been so severe that my original memories from within the coma did not include any recollections whatsoever from my life before the coma, including language and any knowledge of humans or this universe. That scorched earth intensity was the setting for a profound spiritual experience that took me beyond space and time to what seemed like the origin of all existence. Those memories began in a primitive, coarse, unresponsive realm, the earthworm's eye view, or EEV, from which I was rescued by a slowly spinning clear white light associated with a musical melody that served as a portal up into rich and ultra-real realms. The gateway valley was filled with many earth-like and spiritual features, vibrant and dynamic plant life, with flowers and buds blossoming richly and no signs of death or decay, waterfalls into sparkling crystal pools, thousands of beings dancing below with great joy and festivity, all fueled by swooping golden orbs in the sky above, angelic cores emanating chants and anthems that thundered through my awareness, and a lovely girl on a butterfly wing who proved months later to be central to my understanding of the reality of the experience, as reported in detail towards the end of my book Proof of Heaven. The chants and hymns thundering down from that angelic choir provided yet another portal to higher realms, eventually ushering my awareness into the core, an unending inky blackness filled to overflowing with the infinite healing power of the all-loving deity at the source, whom many might label as God or Allah, Vishnu, Jehovah, Yahweh, the names get in the way, and the conflicting details of orthodox religions obscure the reality of such an infinitely loving and creative source. While writing it all up weeks later, God seemed too puny a little human word with much baggage, clearly failing to describe the power, majesty, and awe I had witnessed. I originally referred to that deity as Om, the sound that I recalled from that realm as the resonance within infinity and eternity. Many lessons were taught in that core realm, with all of the higher dimensional multiverse collapsed down into a complex oversphere that served as a tool in advancing some of the deeper lessons. All of my understanding of space, time, mass, energy, information, soul journeys, causality, the afterlife, reincarnation, meaning, and purpose took on extraordinary relationships that I am even now just beginning to unravel. I cycle through those spiritual realms from the lowest EEV all the way back to the core multiple times, offering a rich spiritual odyssey that completely defies any conventional scientific understanding, given the duration and severity of my meningoencephalitis. Given those medical facts, my brain was incapable of providing any hallucination, dream, or psychic drug effect due to the global damage of my neocortex, so apparent from my neurologic exams, scans, and laboratory values. My coma taught me many things. First and foremost, near-death experiences and related mystical states of awareness reveal crucial truths about the nature of existence. Simply dismissing them as hallucinations is convenient for many in the conventional scientific community, 
but only continues to lead them away from the deeper truth these experiences are revealing to us. The conventional reductive materialist, physicalist, model embraced by many in the scientific community, including its assumption that the physical brain creates consciousness and that our human existence is birth to death and nothing more, is fundamentally flawed. At its core, that physicalist model intentionally ignores what I believe is the fundament of all existence, consciousness itself. NDEs such as mine then represent the tip of the spear in a rapidly progressing enlightenment of the scientific community around the mind-brain relationship and our understanding of the very nature of reality. The world will never be the same. That does it for this retelling of Dr. Alexander's experience. If you're interested in hearing more, and you haven't yet, make sure to check out his book. If you have read Dr. Alexander's book, please tell me what you thought about it in the comment section below. Until the next video, stay safe, be blessed, and I will see you again next video.